On the survival show today, Ark isn't going to be at Gamescon, or is it? Nightingale's had some big massive improvements and it looks like even more are coming in a large update later on this summer. Rust continues to dominate with its latest update adding new items and new ways to play as well as more improvements. June Awakening seems to be ramping up with its dev blogs as it's going to be highlighting showcasing new features, artwork and more from the game hopefully every month. Does this mean a release later on this year? I don't think so. And a quick look that I was briefly a community manager for Hostile Mars has got a new demo up and running. You can go and check it out for yourself. Let's go, it's the survival show. So only pretty much yesterday on my JPG2 channel, where I cover mostly ARK, but I am adding in more games, I spoke about the fact that on the Xbox blog, they listed that ARK 2 was going to be a playable demo available at Gamescom. But within only an hour of that actually going live, they added an editor's note, shout out to Qatari for that one, and pretty much adjusted and said there wouldn't be a playable demo. Now, I still think there's going to be a big reveal of ARK 2 at Gamescom, it's been four years since the initial reveal showing old Big Ed Vin Diesel, apparently his daughter nearly getting chomped on by a new Tyrannosaurus Rex, as well as some weird NPC humanoid creatures. Ark's had a troubled history since then, having pretty much abandoned its old game, come out with a cash grab remaster, and has added three different unique ways that it's trying to earn money from players to keep the game alive. Arc 2 is meant to be a very different proposition from what we're used to in the open world structure of Arc. It's meant to be more combat focused with heavy inspiration apparently from Dark Souls. Some of the other devs with the game have also coined it like God of War. That remains to be seen obviously. The remaster only came out last December so is it a sense to go ahead and release a sequel to your game? Kind of yeah, because the remaster is meant to be this very different type of game that's going to be supported for the next few years. I guess Wildcard will feel that maybe Arc 2 is going to be substantially different and offer players something else. The official word on the game is, well, it's not actually releasing this year unless you take into account the publisher and their financial reports that do state they are expecting it still to launch. But with nothing concrete or said by the developers themselves, it could be a bit of a red herring. Well, I guess we'll find out at Gamescom on the 22nd of August when I think there still will be a reveal trailer or something showing how Art 2 is progressing. You never know, we might even see a teaser for Aberration, the remastered version of one of Ark's DLCs as it's going to be going live at the beginning of September. It does feel crazy having two kind of games available and running, but the idea to me looks like Ark is meant to be this live service game, that their struggling publisher Snail Games is desperate to make it, versus hopefully something innovative and pretty interesting and fun in being maybe an action orientated game in Art 2. So Nightingale had a bit of a rough start. I've always maintained I thought this game was great, but maybe a stat launch window and some connection issues really did put it a little bit behind. It's had a ton of updates to correct what was a mixed review score, making it mostly positive now in the last 30 days, and I think it's got bags of potential that will absolutely be realized. But the game clearly hasn't hit the mark with some players and nor its developers as its player numbers dwindle. Inflection have released a dev blog with Aaron Flynn, the game's director, and art director Neil pretty much going over how some of the changes are going to be taking place and additions, including increased build limit and by the sounds of it, a major revamp of the game. Not just simply another update like they've been doing, which has improved and really taken on board a lot of feedback but really changing, I would say, core aspects of the game. I guess we'll have to wait and see how it actually turns out. They've also said that basically anything that they were thinking about, like more endgame content, that will be on hold a bit as they try and get this new version of Nightingale up and running and out by the end of the summer. So yeah, I really want this game to succeed. I pretty much sacrificed covering in Shrouded and quite a few other games to spend a good amount of time putting over 160 hours into it on release. The updates they've had have been great, but maybe not enough to sustain me covering it for too long more than just a quick news video or a few little guides showing stuff off. So yeah, I'm really hoping this hits the spot. Rust's latest monthly update has gone live, adding brand new alert can traps, so signify when players are maybe trying to creep up on your base or in a monument. Lots of visual and sound improvements, including how you creep through bushes, as well as your weapons and items drop into the ocean floor a bit more realistically. It's a smaller update after the last one, which added obviously brand new bikes, sidecars and bicycles for players to take advantage of. But again, great to see the template on how to keep your, I guess now, live service survival game going. 
It looks like September may be relatively small as well, with October being the big one where they introduce some maybe map changes in terms of some of the biomes getting either refreshed or changes in how the maps are generated, as well as a whole host of other stuff. There is Twitch drops live right now as well, or incoming, so stay tuned for that on Twitch to support your favourite Rust creators. And yes, I'm hoping to dive into this on my JPG2 channel soon, as apart from me roasting console when it came out, I've desperately tried or wanted to get into Rust on PC for a long time, so I'm hoping that will be the time I can do it soon. So apparently June Awakenings had 1 million wishlists? I know the Dune franchise is popular, especially with the movies lately, but really, that high? I don't see this game coming out this year. They've not actually given a full release date at any time in the last couple years of development, but we had seen a lot start to ramp up since the end of last year. More blogs, more trailers, more deep dives with showcases, special events that they hosted themselves, as well as being at different game award shows and stuff. We're expecting a big show in at Gamescom, so that's the time to check back here for sure, as I'll be recapping anything that has happened with ARK and obviously June Awakening. But yeah, they've announced that they've got a new dev blog running once a month, highlighting maybe some new features and art and gameplay possibly from the upcoming game, as well as anything that's going on in the community. The beta is now rolling for it permanently. They're not shutting it down, they're adding people in different waves, and it's still behind closed doors. This game is not coming out this year. At best, I hope maybe at some point early to mid next. And I guess I am intrigued, even though Funcom are on my little hit list at the moment because of the way they ended up just milking Conan Exiles fans, I am still intrigued about whether or not they can pull off a proper full survival MMO in the shape of what June is promising to be, with dedicated areas for PvP, a big emphasis on working with others, all contributing to an economy. Like you've heard a billion times about every MMO ever going, can they actually do it? I guess we'll find out. But given they're only just starting to do this kind of detailed info now once a month, I can't see this launching this year. And I've heard from a few insiders that the game might be in a bit of a rough state at the moment in its beta, which is fairly normal, but yeah, I don't expect it to release anytime soon. And Hostile Mars. Like I said, a couple years ago now, pretty much, I went and had a little three month, four month experience being a community manager for this little indie game. It's a tower defense kind of open world survival game, but I think it's leaned more into that tower defense aspects now for sure, and it's developing really well. It just wasn't for me in the end. I was still maybe a bit too tired to being a YouTuber, and I did have a bit more success with Grounded taking off for me. I really did love it. I thought it was a good, interesting experience and totally would do it again once my YouTube career is finally at a full stop. Kept in contact with the creator and pretty much they seem to be ramping up. They've spent the last two years rehauling or overhauling the complete game and just adding so much more to it. I had a little play around with it today. Still needs a bit of work in guidance in how to get through certain sections and usual little bugs and issues you might find with just a demo available on Steam, but so far I'm feeling like it's really heading in the right direction. Basically you have to block off and destroy tons of mechs and robots trying to attack your obviously hubs. You'll need to scavenge for supplies, harvest and mine minerals, eventually setting up automation and then hoping to defend it all against waves and waves of enemies. They're part of the Tower Defense Festival that's going on at the moment on Steam, and the game is scheduled to come to consoles in the future as well, but obviously give it a time to launch on Steam first. So yeah, you may see a little bit more from me on this as it gets ramping up to its 1.0 development. Although not a strictly full-blown survival game, I think it has got some merits, and obviously I liked the game originally anyway, even if it wasn't anything to do with me working for it. So I will do any new updates about when it's about to launch, any release date info, and absolutely will be taking a look at it in the near future again with some gameplay or live stream. So that's it. That's Survivor Show done and dusted as usual. I know it's hard to keep up, but go and check out all my channels. JPG Crafted for games like Grounded, Small Land, Core Keeper, and more. Games that maybe have a bit more of a PvP aspect or online MMO stuff. That is going to be the home of JPG2, covering games like Ark in the future, probably stuff like Dune Awakening, and maybe some Rust. And right here is where you get a mixed hodgepodge of everything. Brand new updates to your favourite games, new games on the horizon, and detailed guides and gameplay when these games come out. So until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye bye.